What do you get when you have two microphones, a bottle of bourbon, and plenty of time to kill? It's the Bourbon Talking Podcast with Billy and Jimmy. Glad you found us. Sit back, relax. Let's see what we get into. Now, why do you put your left ear pad on your right ear? What are you talking about? Do I got it backwards? I believe you got it backwards. That's why he was sounding Cantonese. <laughs> <laughs> it's Billy. Oh, oh yeah, that's Billy no, for you. English. All right. Good. <laughs> it's like a zip knop. Yep, yep. Freddy is the devil. <laughs> like, hmm. Yeah, wear your headphones backwards. Everybody starts talking backwards. It's the yeah. Bourbon Talking Podcast, episode 51. Dear God, you found us once more. <laughs> We're here. All right. We got uh, our special guest back here, our brother in arms, John Lesconnect. Say hi, John. Deuces. And, of course, you know Jimmy's here. <laughs> it's Jimmy. He owns the place. So of course the he's here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when, yeah, when you have the room. And yeah, exactly. Auto- yeah. Automatically get in. John brought gifts today. Yes. I know. I'm like, glass only yeah. as I said. Yeah. John brought gifts. What do we got, John? We have some, uh, the Special Operations Salute Whiskey. So I've got a, uh, I've got a Ranger buddy, and I've got a, uh, Jump Master Command Sergeant Major, both retired, and for the last few years we've swapped at Christmas time. We swapped alcohol. You know, we just send. We have say, okay, what do you want to drink this year? And we send whatever. Well, this year it happens. Both of them sent me the same the, thing. The same thing, which was oh, actually so you, you made out like a band. I made out year. like a. Well, well, have you opened the other one yet? Have you tasted this? No, haven't tasted it at all. So, so it waiting. may be a gift or. Not so much, you know. So it may be a display. <laughs> well, it may be, but we're gonna we're definitely gonna try it because I waited because I said we're the three of us are gonna try it together. So, and you guys were like, let's do it on a podcast. Yeah, and it's been wow. Here we are in February, so you've been sitting on this yes. for a couple of months. Well, no, about a month because these things were out of they. Okay, it had to ship and everything else like that. So yeah, I got it at the uh, end of January, beginning of yeah. February time frame. I think I told you guys it mm-hmm. came. Okay, so it hasn't been. Um, no. fermenting too long no, over I on your house. No, it has All not right. been fermenting too long. So. Well, let's blow the dust off that thing no and get a shot. Kidding. Now, you let's... know this is called, it's the bourbon talking, yes. but we're going to make an exception exactly. today. Yeah. Well, because, you know, <laughs> this is a special, this is, what is it? The It uh, sponsors, and 50% of the proceeds go yeah. to veterans and the families. Well, let's drink up. I let's... like drinking for a cause. Yeah. That it, changes exactly. everything. Man, if only we get these guys to sponsor us. Oh, never mind. <laughs> you know, the glass is only so big, John. He's, he's not going to say when until it's flowing yeah, out of the table. When we went to dinner the other night, it was like he got a bourbon and they gave it to him in a shot glass. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> who drinks this little bunch of bourbon? <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, it comes in a, it comes in a pretty cool little container. And the, and the, the great thing about it, it has all the different special operations unit crests and everything on here. Um, and it also comes with a, a lithiograph that it they put in here. Oops, I don't drop it. And oh, that's cool. That's yeah, nice. Send yeah. me, you know, because only 3% of special operations, only 3% of all services, or how do I say it? Out of all the service members, only 3% are special operators. Right. But just like it says on the, the tube, over 50% of all casualties are from the special operations community. So this is a great tribute to these guys, you know, because they are the tip of the spear. Yeah, absolutely. So, all right. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Hey, let's, cheers. Let, let's go in for round one. Here we go. Yeah, let's give it a shot. Well, damn. Yeah, tasty. we'll have to rate this thing at the end, but uh, that is, uh, it's not, I can, I can, I can tell it's not a bourbon. Yeah, but it's, I like it. It's good. Oh, well, go ahead. Just, just I'll get the farm two. away around. Just get the farm out. Well, now. you don't know how good I think the good is, but it's good. <laughs> I didn't cough or spit it out. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah, I think you, I thought it, I think you let the cat out of the bag, but that's just me. Not row, Reggie. Yeah. But anyways, so 
It's it's been what since uh, the holidays since you've been on our podcast, John. Yes, sir. It's been a it's been a hot minute. You have a problem with that thing. Yeah, it's not. The lid's not wanting to go on. <laughs> Did it grow? <laughs> you tell me. Let's take a look at it. Oh my gosh! You know how many how many service members does it take to put a lid back on? I think more than the, than this in this room right now. I mean, it only yeah. took me a second to put it back on a minute ago. Well, I, I took it well, off. I put it back on too, but since we uh, took the bottle out and cracked the cracked this thing open, it's it expanded. <laughs> this used to have a 60 millimeter mortar in it hey, hey, hey. there it goes all right so i guess but i had to finagle that yeah i know that's what i was trying to do too i was like what the, what the heck that's cool. so but yeah it's been a hot minute since i've been on we've yeah. been busy we've been busy and we spent the first 30 minutes watching you put the lid back on the thing. yes <laughs> we've been busy all right that's all we got for today's <laughs> show guys <laughs> and we're, that, that's a wrap and uh we'll see you next time exactly so, all right, hey, well, 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 a lot of a lot of crazy crap going on right now in the world. Where do you guys want to take the plunge into first? Well, let's let's start out with what we did Wednesday, the ride. Ah, uh, you know what? Yes, absolutely. That I was, think that uh, would be a fitting start. That to, would be a great to, fitting to start. Drinking this, yes, and and talking and a salute about what to we her. Did. Fantastic, great, great yeah. opening there. So. Wednesday, we did a ride for uh, Sergeant Kennedy Sanders. Uh, she was killed in Jordan. Um, about two weeks ago. About two, two, two or three weeks ago. And we escorted her uh, remains from Florida all the way back up to her hometown of Waycross, Georgia. Uh, very emotional. I mean, just to see the communities come out. I mean, every little town we went through, people out outside. And even places like, how do they even hear about this yes. while standing outside? Yeah, it was it was pretty cool. Every, every town lined the streets. There was her favorite color was purple. Yeah. And so they had purple balloons. They had purple ribbons on trees and stop signs. And so it was actually a pretty cool. It was emotional. It was. I was going to say we were, we were talking because we, we talk on comms while we're riding. And especially in Georgia, we had to wear helmets. And it was one of those things as Jimmy and I were talking to keep ourselves from, you know, choking up and crying. Billy was quiet because he was he had he shed a few te- a few tears just like we did just yeah, because it was of hard the, not to yeah. yeah it was an emotional emotional thing and brought back memories and stuff like that so it's tough you know it's uh when you when you escort one home like that and this is believe it or not this is the second one this year we've done yeah you guys have done the other one we did the uh the Korean War veteran who was missing for what fifty years and they finally identified his remains and we escorted him back to Georgia yep so. And I, I just, it was an honor. To it me. was. It was an honor to, yeah, to do that. Yeah, glad we can be a part of that. So, yep. Really she, she's back home where she belongs with her family now. And so yep. hopefully they can start to have some some peace. And Yeah, the, you know, she was a reserve soldier. And mm-hmm. the other two that were, were killed also, they're from Georgia, Georgia, Georgia also. Savannah, Savannah was the, the, young, the other female soldier. And, um, there was a she sergeant. There was a yeah, and older, he was from a d- different part of Georgia. Yeah, but I sure were. I just knew about, they were all from Georgia. I just knew about Sergeant Sanders because we did the I know more about her. Yeah, because we did the escort for her. Yeah, so yeah, so definitely uh, an emotional day. I'll put up a couple of quick photos and snapshots from that. But it was nice. Um, everybody coming out and showing their support and law enforcement and first responders and flags flying from the um we had fire about trucks two, and what 250 bikes yeah, 50, yeah, 300 bikes yeah. Yeah, yeah easy yeah it was it was a great a turnout. great turnout from um a bunch of different posts from the american legion here in northeast florida so oh we know the other veteran rider groups yeah, yeah that were yeah. patriot guard and we That's even right, had patriot uh, guard. We have several sheep clubs here in northern Florida, northeastern mm-hmm. Florida, and all of them line the sides of the, the highway also, which was a pretty cool thing to see all the Jeepers out there. Tractor trailers. Oh, yeah. In tandem, stopping all traffic on the other side you know, of the and highway. I, and I even said great. this on the ride. What's, what's kind of cool was you don't really see it anymore, but when a funeral procession passes, you know, I mean, this was like on a major interstate, and then cars were stopped uh, as the possession yeah. went by. And 
You just don't see that anymore. Yeah. I mean, the old think, veterans standing on the side of the road yeah. saluting and, you know, yeah. and so that was that was pretty cool. So gives nope. me hope. Gives me hope about this country. Yeah, just when, you know, you yeah, this country's tearing itself apart, you know, and I and I, I said it on the ride as we pulled into Waycross there. I mean, you just you had people from each sides of the political arena all standing in unison, yep. all given you know, and respect. I, I think that's the majority of this country. And what's getting shoved down our face is that point zero zero one percent. Oh, absolutely. And I think the majority of America still has that that patriotism, that yes. unity, that sense of brotherhood, that sense of pride, that, that sense of pride. It's still there. That it's just what's getting pumped to us through the news. And and, and I, again, it's that that one percent. That everybody that we're trying to placate to, and, well, and yeah. that's the problem. I mean, those and it's just, it, it's and we're that, starting to think it's the whole world, the whole yeah, it's country. small percentage it's raising right hell, and yeah. they're the ones screaming the loudest. Yeah. It's like, right. so everybody's God. listening, but it takes a significant emotional event like this, what just happened, mm-hmm. for bring to bring people back together, yeah. like 9/11. Yeah. Look what happened. You, you say it all the time. Yeah. It's going to take something like 9/11 to bring a it back together. Significant event to bring it back yeah. together. So, but this was a significant emotional event for. The local, local people mm-hmm. and so they threw away all their differences and stood on the side of the road to honor yeah. her so and we were able to get people who you know probably mm-hmm. didn't we don't probably see eye to eye with everybody that rode with us no you know but we all rode for one one cause one cause mm-hmm. so yes absolutely no it was a it was a great cause and again it's uh it didn't matter your your, your race, your party affiliation, or yep. what, everybody stood shoulder to shoulder as this young lady uh, came by in a hearse. Yep. And that was that was the the great part about it. Like yeah. you said, there's still hope for this country. Yep. But it's going to take a significant event to bring us back together. And I, was like, and I really don't want to see it. Why, why can't we just come back together yeah. on our own? Is you know Something's going to happen. Something's got to happen. Yeah, something's got to happen to do that, So, which is sad. It is. Yeah, so. and... But how many people got to lose their lives for this country to get back together? Exactly. That's crazy. Exactly. So, but I do want to bring up since can we are we done with that? We can. Sad, yeah. that we can part? segue into anything you want, John. On to the next segment. This is your bourbon, so this is your shows or your whiskey. Hold on. So hold we're on, gonna <laughs> hold on. What am I gonna say? Oh God! <laughs> how about them Kansas City? Uh, you had to bring this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> now I am gonna have to get drunk off this shit. Just actually, got, I just actually, gotta say, I, I think that was already mentioned on the last podcast. <laughs> no, yeah. no, it wasn't. Trust me, I watched it. It wasn't mentioned at all. We didn't and, talk about how annoying you were. I'm no, pretty sure that came up. No, not at all. Well, that part. Uh, yeah, when, how obnoxious you were about the Chiefs. When yeah. the Chiefs always scored touchdown oh and beat god. your teams. Yes. Oh but my god. We had a we had a Super Bowl happy hour at my house in the driveway. We probably had 50, 50 people over yeah. that night. It was a pretty good night. You know. <laughs> Bless you. Uh, have to edit that. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely edit that out. Uh, but, uh, that was juicy. Yeah, we had, uh, we had a good time. You know, Jimmy being loud at the beginning like he normally is until, you know, his team starts to fade and then he's all quiet. And he's I, like, thought I, was, I thought I was doing well all the way through the fourth quarter and <laughs> into the fourth quarter and overtime went to shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was being the host the first half of the game and then the second half I'm like sitting in the garage with everybody like watching the damn game. I got to admit I had zero stress. I didn't have a dog in a hunt and that was probably one of the best football games I've that, watched in quite a while. Um you know, when a, just for sports, that was a good game. Yes, yeah. it was a pretty good game. Um, yeah, we so sat in the garage. I could, I could talk about both sides. Yeah, Deb was uh, Deb, my wife. We're sitting there watching the game, and I'm just blowing through cigars. And she's like, "Really?" I'm like, "It's it's for good luck." You know, every time they've won, I've had a cigar in my hand. I've been smoking. We're going to continue this. So I think in that fourth quarter in the in overtime, I blew through like four cigars. Oh, oh so you had two or three going at the same time. You got one hanging out of every orifice. <laughs> but it was a good, it was a good game. It was a good time. A lot of people. Oh, a was. lot of food. Oh my goodness. Mm-hmm. A lot of food. A lot of a lot of drink. So. No, it was definitely a good. A lot of food left over. Holy yeah, there was a lot. When I when I was leaving. I was standing at my gladiator looking into your garage, and Tyler was just standing there, and all of a sudden he turns around, (laughs) and he wedges this whole slider, the whole entire slider in his mouth. 
And so I posted something about it on Facebook and like eight hours later, he's like, I eat a slider. I don't, I don't. <laughs> he was ham. Oh, he was totally. He's like, I didn't do it. I said, yes, you did. He's like, You're I hammer. totally do not remember that. And I'm like, dude, you flip topped your head, <laughs> inserted a whole yeah. slider. Yeah. Deb's like, was, Blanca cut him off. Hammer. So I was like, so I got up and I was like, Tyler, one of the crown and Coke. <laughs> And poured him a big one. Dude, he was yeah. oh, he was lit. He was having a good time. Yeah. He was. Yeah, Celebrating he was, that new boat yeah, too. That, exactly. That brand new he was outside right now in he's the rain. Pressure washing. The rain pressure yeah, washing his boat. He's in the rain cleaning it right now. Yes. Blowing hey, that's a nice boat, boat, man. Yeah. If I was him, I'd be cleaning that too. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a Boston, gorgeous boat. Boston Whaler, right? The Boston Whaler, yeah. yeah. It's a gorgeous boat. Yeah, it's a very nice boat. That's he's our new best friend. That's you know, right. So coming this spring. I don't know. Summer. He didn't take us fishing yesterday. So he oh, went yeah. fishing yesterday. Well, he's out there cleaning it today. So well, well he's doing the new floor. He's he's putting a whole sea deck. New, he's putting a new sea deck in it. Okay. Yeah. So he's ha- trying to get all the old stuff off with all the old glue and everything else like that. So uh, he, yeah, because yeah, I went over there yeah, one time yeah. and he was working at it. I mean, there's so much glue on that deck. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. So. Hey, and Scott got a new boat too. So uh, you know, we got a couple new friends. Yeah, we got a couple yeah. new friends. The friend base is starting to grow, <laughs> <laughs> especially when the weather about to warm up. <laughs> we need we need a guy with a, uh, a twenty foot flats boat so we can go inshore fishing. We mm-hmm. need somebody with a midship that can get us up and down the ditch. You hey, know, hey and how about a fifty three foot houseboat to go up and yeah. down intercoastal? Yep, so that's we what can, I was just yeah, yeah, yeah. drink on. What, did, what does Steve have? Steve. Steve hair. Here, I'm not sure what. He, oh, he's got a. Um, he says he goes like 20 some miles yeah, offshore. Yeah, he's, he's got yeah. that uh, big he's charter a boat. He's got a. Old, yeah, he's got like a 40 foot charter boat. Oh, okay. The ye old pirate. Yeah, and so he takes out the disabled kids. So, I mean, yeah. he does good things with that thing. Yeah. It's amazing. And, and I know veterans. he said he was taking disabled veterans out too. Yeah, he goes. He has a wheelchair ramp in there, so he can get. I mean, handicapped. So nice. I mean, he's he's always done really well with that. Yeah, Steve is one of our uh, Legion riders, and. Part the of Godfather. This, but we call him the Godfather because he's been on the island in the Legion forever, and he's part of the Sons of the American Legion. So he's not an actual veteran, but he's his 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 family was his family was. So he can be part of the American Legion as a son. So he's he's a big part of our American Legion here, post fifty four and on and Fernandina Beach. Just an outstanding man. Yes. Shout out to Steve at Ye Old Pirate Fishing Charters here in Fernandina Beach. Contact him and go catch fish. Absolutely. Or contact us. We'll put you in contact with them. Yep. So, so yeah, email these guys. What's your, what's your email address? Billy? That's info at it's the bourbon talking.com. It's right about there. Yeah, it's <laughs> over here. There, oh, it's over there. Somewhere. It's right, like the, right. It's right here. It's, it's, it's down there. At the bottom. Hey, I, I did. I, I emailed you and I didn't get a prize. Jimmy, you haven't paid the man a prize yet? Uh, you didn't tell me about the email. Uh, it got sent to you. You don't check your emails? Jeez. Oh, my God. How many of you people I didn't check, get prizes? I check my Jimmy? emails every day. I'm waiting on some contracts. Mm-hmm. Billy replied to me. Oh, see. Oh. He replied to me. And you ignored it. That's crazy. <laughs> that's, uh, that's something else. Sorry, my people. email was, where's my prize? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and here you are. You're back. Welcome back Welcome to another back. episode of this the Bourbon Talking. So, yeah, this your, uh, you're you're a, a special guest for 2024. Hey, hold on a second. I'm Our, bringing the special. Whoa, 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 I'm bringing whoa, whoa, whoa. the gifts that's here. Right. That's the that's part of the prize you bring us a gift oh is that what it is yes thank you so to be a guest you on your too show can also come on our show and bring us bourbon yes uh, and we would really appreciate that <laughs> and uh i mean you're our first guest in 2024 yeah, yeah. i guess i am yeah nice. and you brought gifts thank you I, so I, I much you win the prize so bravo bravo <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, i played that one off of billy Pretty good in a pinch there, You like yeah, that you one, huh? Yeah, you guys can dancing left and right. Yeah. You like that one, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I got you a bullshit button I know, there. That's, that's oh, what yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, I brought you one out. It was in the closet. <laughs> I had to break all that shit out. Stuff. So, stuff. This is a family-friendly show. Sorry. <laughs> Really? First fifty episodes weren't. And, uh, I was say, <laughs> really? Yeah. Since when? Yeah. Well, you know, we're kind of like uh, the middle of March or February, going into March, and you know, just trying to make it friend- family friendly. Uh, family friendly. Uh, yeah. Fuck it. Let's yeah. It's going. not going to happen. <laughs> Why change today? We'll so, work on that next episode. Yeah, most definitely. 
just every time Jimmy talks. <laughs> <laughs> That's bullshit. <laughs> Where's your 10-second delay? Isn't that yeah. what it's supposed to be? Yeah. Uh, it, Timmy! <laughs> get him on a delay. All right. Fix the echo. I th- he's making a snack. Fucking isn't he? Timmy, dude. Timmy is just slacking on the job. You guys need to fire Who him. That I'm bitch. telling you. I think you did. <laughs> You're the IT guy. <laughs> You're the IT I guy. I say out of your guy. world, man. I'm just the talent. He maybe looked good once. And <laughs> since then, there's been nothing. All that See, guy. Jimmy's the talent. I'm the looks. You're. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, feel free to put me in the back room behind a glass wall, and I just yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Let me look that up for you real quick, just a moment. Well, hold on, Billy's in my ear. What is yeah. he? Yeah. And you do a good job, Billy. Well, and thanks, Timmy. buddy. Not and that Timmy. I require pats on the back, but every once in a while, I think uh, we're paying Timmy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I told Jimmy, we have got to get a TV up so that I can cast things up on the wall so that we can. Well, the, the TV's uh, in my garage right now. Well, I think we <laughs> want to just get a, just a small model. Yeah, one in the we, closet there. I mean, an 80 inch would be okay too. I wouldn't mark it that, but. Yeah, I'd have to put it on that wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can put it there. It yeah. would be perfect right there. Yeah, but then it'd be behind me because every time the, I can't have it where the door opens onto it and breaks it. Well, who do you have coming slamming the door or breaking down your doors? Yeah. My dog. <laughs> well, they make the my long. Dog, my dog. My dog right the, here. The door stoppers, get a long one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Custom make one. Tyler's got a welder. He can. The thing is, though, we put it right here. I mean, the, the glare and the heat off of this thing, and I'd be sunburned <laughs> after it. Oh, left side of my body be sunburned. Kind of like that dude on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, or, uh, yeah. Spit it out, Billy. He's thinking. Do, 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 <laughs> He's thinking. Do, 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 <laughs> the pressure. Okay, we need the Jeopardy song. I know, right? Here, I set it up. Jeopardy song. Close play. encounters of the third kind. That's what I was talking about when the, <laughs> when the UFO flies by his car and we, just burns half his face. We should have thought. We should have known it was something about UFOs. Mm. Well, look, man, they're real. <laughs> the preposterous. What are they called now? U- U- Interdimensional beings? No, no, no. They're, what are they called? Not UFOs. UAPs. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yes. That right there. I call it BS. So shallow minded. I'm. There's so I'm much 50, evidence. I'm 50 50 on it. He 50, There's he 50, 50, so 50, 50. much evidence on it. I mean, but there's when, so much what, evidence. Show us a little green man. Show us a man, show us the ship, show us something that, versus the government just saying, oh, yeah, they're real. A, doctor, a doctored you, video. Why don't you call your buddies at Raytheon and get the keys to the building so we can go take a look at you it? You said it was Lockheed Martin, and I have no contacts at Lockheed Martin. The, Raytheon's got a product. Uh, a product? A uh, oh, project going, aliens. too. Uh, okay, well, I'll, I'll give them a little call. Just make that happen. You're going to laugh at me, but I'll give them a call. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, again, I want to see something other than a, a doctored photo. I want to see yeah. a little green man or some ship or something. And don't say, oh, there's proof, the uh, the pyramids. No, I'm not buying that shit. Like the movie Independence Day. You know, Area 51 has a so it's got aliens. So it's got to land in your front yard for you to believe it. Damn near, but I will take, you know, at least something on TV of a real... F- um, what do you what do you UFO think? or little spacecraft or green man or person or alien or well, whatever they call themselves? What what's your thoughts on Captain Faber's testimony for the Tic Tac video off the Nimitz off I, the coast of I, California? I think they should give him a piss test. This that guy was a Top Gun and Squadron commander of the Black Aces, and you think he's fucking smoking dope? I think he is he because I think he's something, but I don't know if it's him and his wingman, his wingman, both. And it was on him radar. and his wingman were both. Well, was, that's that's a <laughs> stupid that that, that well, argument that he is high. Or I don't know. I'm not. No, saying, I'm not no, saying he's saying high. That. I think he may have been this, hallucinating from other drugs from how, previous. What but. the fuck are you talking about? This guy's a F-18 squadron. There, there, there could have been carbon monoxide, whatever. Could have been dirt there, on the window. There's a wingman 
in right. another it's, aircraft it's never, it's, that is watching everything happen. And there's also the radar operator on the Princeton with all the radar data. And the next day, a Blackhawk lands, two guys in suits come out, and they take all the tapes off the Princeton. They have that on video. So, again, and they got and that the, in testimony and with. The, in the admirals of the. Of the yeah, ship yeah, is yeah, saying, yeah, yes, they, we had the two. admiral said, don't talk about it anymore. So, and they were joking when they came into their next briefing, they had little green men and UFO on the board, and they were all joking about it. So, what I'm saying is, who did he testify in front of? Congress, Congress. So, Congress couldn't pull that admiral and say, did this happen? I think they're actually working on that because so, they, because well, they, what they about the, all met in the skiff afterwards. What about these men in black suits that showed up? How come we can't have them testify? Or the Blackhawk? Who are they? How about yeah, the pilot that flew that thing? Yeah. yeah. I that's, need, that's I need some collaboration, saying, right? but just they, two men. They have all these people, and these people are testifying when. David Grush came out and testified in Congress. He was also followed by 45 other people in the intelligence organization. This is coming out, man. No. It's actually oh. Well, until I see it's proof, serious. I'm skeptical. They show you proof all now, the do time. I think, now, again, I, do I think we're but, the only living beings in oh, this no, universe? Absolutely not. But right. I, you can't. I want to see proof of something land. Until yeah. then, I'm skeptical. I, I'm there. I'm, I'm with Jimmy on that part of it. I do believe there's something out there. But until they show us rock hard evidence, not just some people saying, I saw this, I saw this, I see things all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, but he thinks he saw the Kansas City Chiefs win. Well, I, I did see that happen. So, <laughs> so you need to see the actual yes. craft and be able to have access to walk up and touch no, no, it. No, 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 no. I'm not saying, saying that at all. I want to see saying. true life evidence. There is no true life evidence. All the FLIR video and that infrared can all be video. Yeah, that's that all doctor. Yeah. I mean, I, I saw ET and Independence Day. That shit can be created yeah, in Hollywood. There's CGI and everything else like that. So I don't believe that because that can be that can be doctored just like everything right, else. But it, it was a release directly from the government underneath the disclosure. Yeah, they still had time to doctor that thing because they put that they put the request in. They say they they want the Freedom of Information Act. They put that in. They don't. They didn't give it a, give it within twenty four hours, did they? No. It probably went in front of. Hey, we got to do this. We got to make sure it's unclassified. All the and they had time to doctor it, if they wanted to doctor it. That's that's my problem. So, I don't, so you're telling me our government has all this stuff about aliens, but we can't find Biden's secret bank accounts. Yeah, they're in his garage underneath his Corvette oil pan that almost got on fire. Yeah. So, but no, that's my, that's my only thing. I want to see rock hard evidence, you know, just like you and, and, and my wife with Bigfoot, you guys say Bigfoot's oh, like, where's that one going, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> just like Bigfoot. I want to see rock hard, these grainy photos and yeah. that's, you know, let's see people put getting casts of footprints and stuff like that. you know, when Jimmy and I retire, we're going to be Bigfoot hunters, the Harley Davidson. Okay, I was about to say, uh, you got to do something a little better than just Bigfoot. Oh, we <laughs> right, ride Harleys. right through the Northwest in our Harleys. I'm good with yeah, that. We're going to be called the Bigfoot Bikers. There you go. Uh, yeah. I'm good with that and stop and drink bourbon. I like yeah. it. <laughs> I think Jimmy's going to be more drinking bourbon. <laughs> do you do you, oh, yeah. have, do you have any idea how credible we're going to be? <laughs> Not. Two, two crusty dudes on, on Harleys drinking yeah. bourbon up in the mountains yes. of the Northwest. Yeah. Everybody's going to believe so, everything. So I, I will let... The, the two listeners on this podcast that if I come out and say, okay, you can actually believe in UAPs, then I've, say, I've seen something. But right now, I, I wouldn't go there, people. You just have to take these highly credible, trained observers, officers in the military. You have to take, if they would have came out and said, um, I've got intel that, this high value Taliban leader is going to be in this area of Kandahar, and you, that happens you all the time when it comes to that. Yeah, but because that's this a real person. Same, this same pilot that is also having to brief every one of his squadron members when they fly off the coast of Jacksonville. But, but you know what, though? Here's the difference: is that I actually know that there's a Taliban leader that's going to get fucking whacked. 
I haven't seen any proof there's UFOs out there. That's because you don't leave Fall River Parkway. And you're not flying. Where did I go last night, John? I went to the American <laughs> Legion. <laughs> no, but I mean that's the same person. Don, pa- Don Patron's Mexican. Yeah, I restaurant. went to Mexican. Yeah. Oh, and I'm that's, I'm actually topping that, off again. That same person that is highly credible with any other other information also says, "Hey, a a black cube inside of a a a, a, a see through sphere just." Flew past my canopy at 450 knots. But, but again, we, we can we need to believe in the Taliban this. because they took down the World Trade Center. Right. Well, we ISIS, also need I mean, to we've believe seen it. They're this. bombing our military right now. I mean, part of Hamas. I and mean, we also need to take credit and listen to this credible observer who has been trusted to fly a multi million dollar aircraft. Agreed. Who has gone, I listen to it all day long. They're having their flight briefs every morning out of NAS Jacks talk about the UFOs that are right inside of the box. As soon as they get five miles offshore and they enter the training box, these craft are there. You know who we need and to it's ask part about of their brief. flight briefs? We know somebody who flies. Yeah. That's in our group. Senior chief. He's a, he, he's a crew member. So that might be a question we need to ask him mm-hmm. if they're getting those briefs. Maybe they he can't talk about it, but. Well, he's going to hear this podcast and so I can't talk about it. So yeah. we're going to dig a little deeper and see if his testimony yeah. actually has some water because he says every training flight coming out of NAS Jacks, as soon as they hit the box. What's the box? The box is a training area that's designated training off the coast of Jacksonville. I'm no thinking fl- be- no fly zone and stuff like it's, that. For- it's, yeah, and I think it begins at five nautical miles out, <clears throat> and that's where they, you know, practice dog fighting and right, right. engage each other. Only five miles. I think that's where it starts coming wow. off the coast. That's pretty close to me. But, so. they're, but they're flying in, you know, tight formations yeah, when yeah. they're about to do something, and these things are but and. They just up, upgraded to the new Aegis radar system in the F-18s. Right, I remember F-18s. you telling me about that, yeah. That's when, bloop, as soon as they turned this new Aegis radar on, they're like, oh, man, this thing's got to, we, we, we got to do something. Something's wrong with this radar. I, I see things coming down from 80,000 feet, hovering, loitering for three hours, and then buzzing. Something's wrong with this radar. There's shit everywhere. So finally, they fly out there to go check it out. They're actual objects. They're there. And so this new radar system actually is so high tech, it's got the ability to see them. So do we have video of this? Yep. Have they released this? Yep. I'm going to have to Google this and see this. So I got a question. So if uh, a White House press secretary, uh, Kareem, whatever, Jean Pierre came out and said, hey, we got confirmation there's UAPs, would you believe her? Because I've already got more proof and evidence than she's even been. Would you believe her? No. Yeah, see, I, would, I got. I was, I, that's a that's a hard no on me too. But see, that's, <laughs> the difference is the, now if it was um, Huckleby, Sarah Huckleby, when Trump yeah, was, was in her. office, would you believe her when she was the press secretary? Maybe again, it, I I need to see some evidence. No, I I, I, agree, it, it, I don't no, care the, if Trump even told me. I would have to say, so, show me the show me the evidence. I yeah, mean, he I can come out and just say, I mean, he's actually dropped hints that there right. is something there, yeah. and it's like, no, not until I see something substantial here. No, I can't I, I can't I, do it. I get it. I'm I'm tracking you on that one. But it's when you ask that question for Biden's press secretary, it's automatic. No, that's a big no. Yeah, because half the crap that comes out of her mouth is a lie. Yeah, exactly. You know, so. oh, the sun's up, and they'll be looking at the sun. Nope, that's yeah. a lie. What is that? Exactly. <laughs> the economy's doing great. You know, we created six million new jobs. No, you didn't. No, so. they're still bringing back the jobs from COVID. <laughs> COVID exactly. So. Look at the big success, though. Yeah, huge, huge success. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's. I, I just need a little more proof there, uh, conspiracy, Bill Lee. All right. <laughs> I'm going to have to look at the videos. Yeah, they're pretty compelling, I'm look, man. Um, that might be something I have to do this That's afternoon. A, of course, you've seen FLIR video. Oh, yeah. You know yeah, how, yeah, yeah. how grainy it, it's yeah. not precise. Right, because you, show, you actually showed me that right. one of that thing floating across Float the, the uh, 
Yeah, that fog. was off that ISR platform. And then, but I, I the... Uh, and see, to me, that what, right there what, looked what, like it was... Doctored. Doctored. Yeah. That, that's why I say... I, that's why... Right. I mean, it didn't even look real. I mean, no. it looked like something Hollywood tried to piece together. Or actually, some well, kid on YouTube tried to piece That's what's so crazy about that from the witnesses of that, that. That thing was absolutely so bizarre looking. You know, we're used to seeing the regular flying the saucer saucers shape. And, yeah. Now what's new is the... Um, I used to call them uh, flying CO2 tanks, but now they call it the Tic Tac. Right. You know... But the Tic Tac video is actually so good. The the FLIR video on that and Captain Favor got so close to that Tic Tac, you can actually see it looks like, you know what a pitot tube is yeah, coming in front of yeah. the, the aircraft? The airspeed and everything else like yeah, that. And it yeah. actually underneath it, I'll just draw you a picture so I don't know what I'm talking about. Because that, that video you showed us of that look, that like squid, octopus looking, whatever it was floating, reminded me of uh, the droid off of um, Empire Strikes Back. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. In, the, in the on the frozen island, uh, frozen planet. That looks something straight out of Star Wars. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what I was thinking. But the FLIR video of the Tic Tac was so good. You could see it looked like two little pedo tubes. Come, so that's pretty damn clear for right. an infrared yeah. for it to actually for show IR that. and yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to go Google that and see. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. It looked like two little feet. You know, yeah, on your thing. Yeah, you know, that's why we call us the bourbon talking people. Because <laughs> when you get to having a little bit of drink, you don't know what's gonna come out of our mouth. Conspiracy time with Billy. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So um, let's, let's let's move on from ET here. Um, what else? Uh, what else is out there? We. Trump's three hundred and ninety seven million dollars civil judgment. judgment against him. Yes. Oh, I thought you were gonna talk about his three hundred and ninety nine dollar gold tennis shoes. Oh no. My no, I didn't even see that. They sold out in hours. No shit. Yeah. No, I didn't. He's trying to raise there. money for that judgment. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> I thought the timing one of that was pretty crazy too. And uh I guess I think the rumble platform may be about to go public or something. He's expected to make Five to ten billion dollars off of that too. Nice. So Rumble. It, it's a YouTube. Um, hmm. We're on Rumble. Check us out on Rumble. It's the Bourbon talking. Help us out there, Mister Former President. You know, I mean, Jimmy doesn't even know we're on Rumble. He's never, <laughs> never even heard of Rumble. <laughs> it's a it's a oh. U, YouTube competitor, but it doesn't have all the censorship that right. comes with being on a Google platform. Who was telling us about that? Uh, well, Dan Bongino was really big on it. No, no, I'm. Um, when we were down at the Harley dealership in St. Augustine, the service advisor, John, John, he yeah. was telling us about that. That's who was telling us. Shout out to John at Adamac St. Augustine at the outlets. And I'm almost due for an oil change. Yep. Go there, hand John your wallet, and tell him Billy sent you. Yeah, <laughs> just got mine done. <laughs> yeah. I got to take mine. It's actually about to hit ten thousand miles. Gosh, I, this is the most I've ever put on a Harley before. Yeah, we we we've done some riding. Yeah, I'm about to hit. I just hit sixty nine hundred on mine yesterday. I just hit six thousand on mine. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. How many have we? Never mind. You traded in two bikes and stuff. I've had mine. So you've had yours a year longer than mine. Yeah. Well, but him. Yeah, I, I yeah. forgot. He's already traded up twice since I've had mine. So it's. <laughs> <laughs> Has it been twice? Yeah. Well, he, you got the black road he, glide. Then you got the. Yeah. New road glide to CBO. Yeah, and you bought yours after mine, and you have. I got it in July. Yeah, thousand more miles. Well, you went to you went to Sturgis. Yeah. So. That's, well, we only did about a thousand miles out there. Yeah, we didn't do a lot. That's, that's the, the thousand, thousand miles. miles right there. Uh, yeah, because we pretty much ridden everywhere together. Yep. So that's the thousand miles that I don't have. So. Yep. So yeah, we're I mean, yeah hitting ninety six hundred on. The, uh, the escort ride, so right. yeah, okay. I'm not, I'm knocking, I'm knocking close to. It's my goal time. is to get so many miles on it that it's absolutely worthless when I'm not even halfway done paying it off. That's my goal. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife will love that. Yeah, but, but you know, fun. but it's amazing that brand new CVO. Now that the check engine light comes on when the engine's running, 
Texas yeah, says it's let you, It just lets <laughs> you know it's running. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's the, it's, it's a little reverse. Well, because if you don't get new pipes on it, you don't know it's running. Oh, because <laughs> so it's Prius. like a Prius. Yeah, so now that it's got pipes on. It's got to ha- have an engine light to yeah. let you know it's running. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, if you didn't have oh, the pipes. Did, yeah, oh, yeah. But this is just that, you know. The, oh, the uh, engine light comes on, it's running correctly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are the other four lights that are on doing? What's that for? I don't know. I get this occasional <laughs> triangle with an exclamation point in it. So that sounds like. It, it looks pretty <laughs> ominous when you're going down the road at 85. Mm, has it hazard any, any time now? Hazard. Roll, roll, raggy. <laughs> yeah. Wonder, wonder what that one is. It's like, uh-oh. A wheel about to fall off? What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've gotten that, uh, the the freeze warning one, try, the freeze warning one. Yeah. At like 60 degrees, it was we were coming back from St. Augustine once. I'm like, what the freak? Yeah. D- does, does, does Harley know something I don't know that's getting ready to come? Maybe it was det- detecting the cold heart of your wife on yeah. the back. No, no that would be my heart. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. No, I've only had the one light was the, uh, the the check engine or whichever because my battery died hauling it back because yeah. we didn't put it in tow mode. But that was. But that clears itself. And so well, when I pull the codes on it, so you have to hold down the trip button. Right. When you turn the, the bike on as the procedure to bring up the codes on my new one. And the only code that appears is you've held down the trip button for too long, which, <laughs> so that's pretty funny. And need, kind of like an oxymoron. Isn't yeah. it? You, you need an OB2 reader for there's Harleys. A, there's a code for checking the code. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> and just, so that's the only code that pops yeah. up. Yeah. They but, don't make an o, like an OB2 reader like we have for our trucks and Jeeps. Yeah. And there's that. a, uh, I think the app that does the, uh, I could do the live. I have a live tuner. Oh yeah, like I've got SE tuner that's right. hooked to my Bluetooth, and I think it pulls codes. Oh, I'm gonna have to look at that because he did say I can tune it monthly if I wanted to. You know, it'll it'll tell me what I need to do, and I'm like, I'm not messing with it. Not till it dies, then I call them. <laughs> you guys need to do this. You guys need to fix my bike. Exactly. It's still under warranty. Here's the list of things that I think are wrong. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. Yeah, and they've come out with a couple of new updates for it. And then they said, hey, hold up the update. Oh, matter of fact, there's an update on the update. Remember the update I performed on the amp yeah. and it blew my amp up? That update was for the 2024 CVOs, and Harley got that amp update mixed up. Oh. And they sent it out to the 2023 guys. And you know me, I'm always looking for a fix. And I was probably the third or fourth person on the planet to realize that update came out and I applied it instantly killed the amp. I mean, blew it up. And, uh, so I quickly got on the internet was like, everybody stop, stop, do not install this update. 30 guys come up. Nope. Too late. Yep, mine don't work either. <laughs> what to do? <laughs> Take it to Harley dealership. Called Harley six hours later. There's they left the update up there, but they put a banner at the very top that says "Do not install this update." And it was for the 2024 models, which it's actually like, have a, a slightly I, different chipset. So when you installed the the software update, it took it, but that update would not let the amp turn on. Hence, you couldn't back the update down. Or try to reinstall a correct one. So, so they had to replace F- the amp. F U C K E D A G A I N. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> Just another trip down to the dealership. Yeah. Right. And it's not even close. No, it's not. <laughs> we got two closer dealerships to us, yeah, but, they, but we choose to go to St. Augustine. I've gone to them for years. Orange like, Park's not closer. Don't go back no more. Than St. Augustine? Yeah. Park, I don't think it has close. to be. Yeah. yeah, it's closer. It's closer. Nah. Yes. Nah. I mean, well, yeah, it ain't that much closer. Yeah, because we time out. Go. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. All right. Be Big sure interruption. You, be sure you got dinner Thank ready you. when I get home. All right, bye. Right. Have dinner ready when I'm home. <laughs> And he thinks he wears the pants in the house. <laughs> we know. We know better. Yeah. <laughs> we know better. Uh, so last, right. night, yeah. last night we were at dinner. He's like, she was like, let's just share your chimichanga. And he's like, no. I said, if it's too small, I'm punching you in the face. <laughs> and so when she gets it, because she ended up sharing nachos with my wife, and she goes, hey, honey, let me have a little bit. So she takes almost half his chimichang with all the shrimp in and it. And all the shrimp was down at her end, and she's like, I was just furious. He was hot. 
That's okay. I have plenty. I was fine. <laughs> and then them jalapenos. Holy oh, shit. Oh, God. That was hilarious. Let Ooh. me tell you, at 3 a.m., I popped out of bed. Like, I didn't get like any a, text. <laughs> hold, I forgot to text you. I told you I was going to. It was 2.45 a.m. I told you it was going to happen at 3. Uh, Give me the Rolaids. I keep a big <laughs> tub of Rolaids right on my bed. No, no, I, I, I mean, I eat jalapenos like, you know, potato chips. I love them. I had two and I, I grab one, I just kind of chump on it. I'm like, whoa. Really? You got to try one of these. <laughs> he I'm over here like drinking half my water. <gasps> he goes, like, try these guys. No. Billy, like, I'm gullible. <laughs> <laughs> Billy was sweating. I was looking well, at the waitress. I was like, I don't know where y'all got those from. <laughs> I said, my damn, I would try. <laughs> it was he went back for more. Yeah, he was he was sweating. Was like, oh, yeah. The second one can't be red. as hot. Can't be that hot. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, <laughs> man, I got to say, that was definitely one of the hottest jalapenos I'd ever had. Whoa. It was, it was. And I love, I love jalapenos and, and peppers. Oh, my God. Oh, good. Took my breath away. All right, guys, y'all ready to rate this whiskey? Oh, we're done, huh? We've been in it for about 50 minutes. Oh, oh wow. wow. Time flies when you have a Oh, fun. so we're going to write Oh, write down. Okay. It's been so long since we've done a podcast. Crap. And guys, I'm, I'm Are we qualified to, to rate whiskey? I don't know. Probably we not. Certified, qualified? Is it the whiskey talking? Yeah. And again, I was telling you guys, we, I, Laura made me watch this podcast on YouTube. These two guys rating bourbons. They got like 250,000 followers. They were horrible. Don't talk bad about They other, were horrible. Don't talk bad about other people, they Jimmy. They were bad. Be nice, Jimmy. Bad. Be nice, Jimmy. I mean, we only got in. I mean, we can't even get to three. <laughs> Be nice, and Jimmy. It's, it's, uh. Attention. The bullshit meter has detected major BS. <laughs> Confirmed. That's definitely so I have to say this. It was a hundred twenty five dollar bottle, is what this costs. One twenty five, got it. So, it actually had the first taste was actually really good. Had really good flavor. Didn't you know we've had some that just like wow. It's like drinking kerosene, and this one actually was really good, nice and smooth. I went back for seconds. I think Jimmy went. You went back for seconds. I poured for you. So it was actually a good, had good flavor, good taste to it, in my opinion. What would you think? Yeah, there, this uh, was their howitzer strength, right? Yeah, 105, 105 proof, age six years. Yep. Um, 52% alcohol by volume. Yep. What you, what, did, what did you think of it, Billy? I mean, as far as flavor and taste. and It's got a great flavor. Um, it is different from bourbon. Mm-hmm. I think um, I can't. I can't really describe the difference in the flavor, mm, but um, I don't know. It's I, okay. No, I mean, I thought it's it, pretty smooth. It had flavor. Um, yeah. I think it kind of had a, a little bit of a um, little sharpness to it in the beginning. It kind of a. Anyways, um, it was different. I'm not gonna lie. It was a little little sharp. Little. You know, that may in, be in the from beginning. The, yeah, they they um, the cast that these are in is is a extra heavy charred American and Spanish oak, which we have a lot of Spanish oak trees here on the island. Yeah. So if you was to make bourbon out of our Fernandina Beach, you know, and, oak barrels, maybe just what it tastes like. Yeah. No. It it was uh again I could tell it was. Not a, a traditional bourbon, but I can I can appreciate the the whiskey in it. Um, but it's a it's a rye too, and that's you usually stay. Up. I yeah, I usually try to stay away from rye. Yeah. But uh, so you know, what? Uh, your 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 whiskey you brought it. We'll let you go first. So I thought it was actually a really good one, and yeah. thank you Tim and Ursel for oh, thanks, it away. Yeah. yeah, thanks you know. guys. So just for Billy. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> oh, damn. What a Sunday Ooh. You can round up, Billy. 7.4. No, 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 what, what a dick. I'm giving it. 
<laughs> I'm giving it a 7.5. Yeah. I actually liked it, and especially for the cause yeah. that it's going for. And, I, and that makes it a little better, yeah. too. Yep. Yep. I'm going with a 6.5. Jimmy, what do you got? Okay, for bottle design, I gave it a 10. Yeah. For yes. taste, I gave it a 6. So, I mean, it's a, it, it definitely has a, a different taste than what we're normally trying with the bourbons. Yeah, um, it, most definitely. Again, if I was a straight whiskey-type drinker, which I guess I am because all bourbons are whiskey, but not all whiskeys are bourbon. But um, at the end of the day, it was good. It, was, it, it got smooth as it got watered down a little bit with the ice. And, again, you could tell we're not like sommeliers or whatever right. whiskey bourbon drinker professionals are because they drink it neat. Right, we drink ours with a little bit of ice. Right, <laughs> but no, I I liked that it. it was six, a six. Um, and again, the initial taste was a little 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 harsh, but as it got watered down, it get, definitely became smoother. Yep, and definitely the packaging is definitely a ten. I got a, ten yeah, no, that's right. what I'm saying. The Bottom. packaging is definitely awesome. Yes. So all right, well, John gave it a seven point five. I gave it a six point five. Jimmy gave it a six. That comes out to the devil's number, 6.66. First time ever here on the podcast. I think it's a really good whiskey. Wow. And 6. I'm glad 6. you brought it oh, today. Did you, did you actually have to do the numbers on your... I did, yeah. I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I cheated like a son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but right. thanks, man. We really right. appreciate, appreciate you having you. John, thanks for, having thanks for coming. Cheers. Appreciate you bringing a bottle, Cheers, man. Sir. Cheers, Cheers, guys. guys. Cheers, everyone. Everybody have a great day, and we'll see you next time. Out here. Out.